are the knights dedicated to Christ and his holy mother. We, we are the knights of St. Michael. The end of the world. The Bible describes it. Would-be prophets predict it. Movies and books envision it. By all accounts, we know catastrophes will occur. An astonishing era of wars, famines, plagues, and earthquakes. The amount of sin and devastation will be unparalleled in human history. And the love of people will grow cold. We know from the Bible that at the end of time, Lucifer will make one last desperate attempt to crush the kingdom of God and establish his reign over the entire planet. That sounds a bit frightening, doesn't it? Since Jesus Christ walked the earth, people of every generation have believed they have seen the prophetic signs of his second coming. Could we be living out the latter days? Could this be true? Only God knows. This seems to be a grim picture indeed. But as Catholics, we await these days. Every Sunday when we pray the Nicene Creed, we profess our belief in the second coming of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of the dead, and the final judgment. These days will be days of victory and glory and truth for us. So join us now as we pull back the veil of prophecy and consider the inevitable end. The nights are on now. It's nighttime. Jesus, what sign will there be of your coming and of the end of the age? Take heed that no man seduce you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and they will seduce many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled. For these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be pestilence, and famines, and earthquakes. Now all these are but the beginnings of sorrow. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall put you to death. And you shall be hated by all nations, for my name's sake. Then many will be scandalized and betray and hate one another. And because iniquity hath abounded, the charity of many shall grow cold. But he that shall persevere to the end, he shall be saved. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole world for a testimony to all nations. And then shall the consummation come. For there shall be great tribulation. Such has not been from the beginning of the world until now. And unless those days had been shortened, no flesh should be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days shall be shortened. If then any man say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, do not believe him. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch as to deceive even the elect. Behold, I have told it to you beforehand. If therefore they shall say to you, Behold, he is in the desert, go ye not out. Behold, he is in the inner rooms, believe it not. 
For as lightning cometh out of the east and appears even into the west, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be moved. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the tribes of earth shall mourn. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with much power and majesty. He shall send his angels with trumpet and great voice. They shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the furthest parts of the heavens to the utmost bounds of them. Watch ye therefore, because ye know not what hour your Lord will come. Welcome to Time for Common Sense. Today we have a survivalist who has spent most of her lifetime preparing for the end of the world. Her high-tech website describes catastrophic upcoming events and predicts the end of time. Subscribers depend on her up-to-the-minute analysis of political developments and the latest survival techniques. Please help me welcome Ms. Carolina Jones. Uh, Ms. Jones, it's time for your interview. When I was a small girl, there was a bad, bad storm. I heard a man's voice saying that there will be earthquakes, massive tidal waves, and volcanic eruptions. He said the nuclear reactors are gonna melt, and buildings will crumble, and volcanic dust will block out the sun. As it turned out, someone left the TV on, and I heard a man's voice saying the end of the world could be tonight or tomorrow. Prepare. So ever since then, I've been preparing. Uh, you began preparing for the end of the world when you were a child? Mm-hmm. How long ago was that doomsday program? 20 years, 245 days, 13 hours, 6 minutes, and 10 seconds. So we're gonna lose our electricity and our grocery stores any second now. And clean water's gonna go first. Carolina, think, think about this. Okay. Can anyone really say when the last days are going to come or what they're going to be like? <gasps> Duh! <gasps> Wouldn't you rather be safe than sorry? When I was six, I enrolled in the Outdoors Forever group. Being a fast learner, I quickly learned how to survive. I learned how to fish, how to grow a garden, how to build a fire, and then squish mosquitoes. <laughs> Well, it seems like uh, you've won just about every nature and survival award out there. <laughs> Duh! I'm a natural. My father gave me hunting and fishing lessons. I learned about living off the land, hunting wild animals, and roasting them on an open fire. Oh. <laughs> you, you really do that? Since I was eight? What is it going to be like if you can't drive to a grocery store to get a box of cheesy macaroni? Say bye-bye, fast food cheeseburgers. We have to take these matters seriously, Ms. Liz. What's your plan? I mean, I guess I really haven't thought much about it. Well, I sure have. I have enough flash-dried food to last through 2094. I can filter contaminated water, bathe in puddles, track wild animals, navigate by the stars, disappear in an instant, all by myself. I have a secret spot where I can go and hide. They'll never find me there. Whoa. Uh, you do all this so you can survive the catastrophes at the end of the world? Carolina, I admire your dedication, but 
Why are you so sure that the end is so near? Open your eyes, lady. I thought you were smart. Don't you see the obvious signs? We're living on borrowed time. One well-known prophecy has already been fulfilled. In the Bible, Daniel says, knowledge will increase and men will run to and fro. We have accumulated more knowledge in the last 150 years than in all 6,000 years before. My grandfather rode on a horse. Today, astronauts fly to the moon. But you can't know how much knowledge will increase in the future, and so you can't know when the end will get here. Tell me, are you married? Oh, I never got married. I never even had a boyfriend. I have a higher calling to sound the alarm. Did I mention that prophecy is now being fulfilled daily? We have dictators, wars, hurricanes, earthquakes, false prophets, a cashless society, financial collapse. And this is not even the beginning, considering sexual immorality, blasphemy, witchcraft, <laughs> adultery, and disrespect of parents. Mm, that's a lot. But <laughs> the world has always had similar types of problems. Yeah. Think about all the evil dictators. What about... What about satellite surveillance, mandatory identification systems, implanted microchips, missiles that are ready to rebuild the third temple in Jerusalem? It is definitely the end. You know, Carolina, you've been watching the wrong religious television networks. The church does not interpret scripture in a fundamentalist way, but is concerned with the loss of faith and morals. Me too. Well, for hundreds of years, people have tried to set the date for the end of time and the second coming of Christ. And they have been wrong. Mm -hmm. And some have expected the end of the world just around the corner. Mm -hmm. Reading prophecies, watching the signs, and making predictions. Yeah. Remember Y2K, our 2012 movies? Yeah. But Jesus told us, of that day and hour, no one knows. Neither the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. He simply told us to watch and be ready. Well, that's exactly my mission, to be ready. First, there would be global disaster. Everything's going to shut down. The promise of peace and global unity will force the sacrifice of all personal freedoms with governmental intervention Carolina. causing total chaos. Carolina, uh, maybe instead of focusing only on the end of the world, may I suggest another thought? Early on, Jesus sent his apostles out to warn the people, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Basically saying that the end was near for everyone. Think about this, 100 years from now, virtually every, everyone living at this moment will be dead. We are living in our own end of times. Get it? Uh, it's time for common sense. In the words of Jesus, take heed that no one deceives you. The point is, regardless of how we die, whether it be of natural causes or because it's the end of the world, it's always a good reminder that this earth was not meant to be our home forever. One day or 100 years goes by very quickly. And either way, we're all gonna face the same judge and receive our eternal reward or eternal punishment. I say we should be prepared for that. I miss Liz and that's common sense. Yep. Party favors. For the biggest event of our lives. Are you speaking of what I think you're speaking of? Absolutely. The end. The end? Are you crazy? That's not a celebration. That is it. It's over. We'll be finished. Only to spend all of eternity here. You have officially lost it. First of all, Minnie, you must always remember to accentuate the positive. After all, that is what we're all about, right? Of course, right. But this is one hell of a spin. I know we're looking forward to the three and a half year reign of terror. But after that, I thought we were finished. Well, we are. But you're forgetting the positive part, the harvest. 
Jesus himself He who shall remain nameless said, for the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and those who find it are few, but the rest are mine. I mean ours. Hmm. So this is what we've been laying the groundwork for all these years? For thousands of years, Minnie. The utter chaos, the confusion, the lies. <laughs> remember all those fake doomsdays. My favorite was the year 999. Those people were scared to death. Literally. 1999, <laughs> Y2K, 2012, awesome parties. And those were only the recent ones. We've been playing that trick for centuries. But I have been anxiously awaiting my chance. Your chance for what? for when the end of the world does come, and it truly is time for the reign of the Antichrist. There'll be no more fun and games then. I've been looking forward to this from my first moments in this hellish place. They will feel my revenge. Even the best prepared will be helpless in my gaze. I will have them. I will rule over them all. They will know my fury, and unless they persevere to the end, they will be mine. So get them ready. Make them self-centered, confused. Lazy, careless, clueless. That's right, lukewarm. So caught up in their disastrous little lives, they don't even see us coming. And let me tell you, Mini Positive, they are ripe for the picking. Yeah. Let's hear it for one last hurrah! I darn near can't wait for the final days! I think our end of day's victory lap will load up hell with so many souls, we'll be busting at the seams! That's right, Mini Positive. Very good times indeed. One day Jesus was explaining to his disciples that the world as we know it was not intended to last forever. He said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Of that day and hour no one knows, not the angels of heaven, but the Father alone. For as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, even till that day in which Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So will it be also at the coming of the Son of Man. So too you also must be prepared. For at an hour that you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Sounds pretty serious. What do you guys think about all of this talk about the end of the world? It kind of makes me nervous. It shouldn't. Have you been reading the Bible? Um, no. But we found over 400 end of the world movies, doomsday disaster, films on deadly plagues, Armageddon, nuclear wars, comets, tidal waves, earthquakes. He's right. It's on TV too. I've seen documentaries on it. Also, there's a lot of information on the internet and at the bookstore. They're all saying the same thing. First of all, why are you guys filling your heads with that nonsense? You shouldn't try to get your facts from movies. We can't let those movies and TV shows frighten us, or it'll consume your thoughts and actions. It'll drive you crazy. Yeah, we know. Derek, Nicholas, history books are full of wars. My grandfather told me about World War II, and he thought it was the end of the world then. But it hasn't happened yet. Are there really more famines and earthquakes than ever before? I don't know. But thanks to global media, we hear more about natural disasters and other calamities than ever before. Right. So why don't we just stick our heads in the sand, just close our eyes, and wait till it all goes away? Don't you think we should try to at least be getting ready for persecution and food shortage? Haven't you ever heard of the Antichrist? Come on. Don't these movies just scare you a little bit? 
Hollywood should not be your interpreter for biblical prophecies. You should read the Bible instead and turn to the church for her answers. And of course, you can always take refuge under the protection of St. Michael the Archangel. He led the first battle against Satan, and according to the book of Daniel, he will lead the last. Derek, all we can do is watch and be ready. We have to pray and be spiritually prepared for the end, whether we die of natural causes or something much bigger. Besides, death is the birthday of a saint and heaven's our real home, as long as we persevere to the end. You guys are much more optimistic about this than I thought you would be. How about this? When you feel scared, pray the rosary, or at least one Hail Mary. Every time you pray Hail Mary, you are asking the Mother of God to help you now and at the hour of your death. We should be praying for strength and courage too, because if we really do have to face the end of the world, we will have to depend on God and trust that He will help us through it. I think saying a Hail Mary every day is a great idea. Then why don't we pray one right now? Just in case. Good All right. Okay. In the name Father, of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. When Jesus comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, he will sit upon a throne of majesty, and all nations of the world will be gathered before him. Then Jesus shall separate men, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. The king shall say to them on his right hand, Come, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Truly I say to you, inasmuch as you have done this to the least of my brethren, you have done also to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Jesus told us that no one knows the day or the hour of the end of the world, not even the angels of heaven, only God the Father. Despite the signs that we may see, we do not know when the end of the world will come. But we do know that death comes for us, each and every one of us. Let's prepare ourselves so that we may be ready for that final moment when we stand before our divine creator. We were created to know, love, and serve God in this life so that we can be with him in the next. We are here to build up the kingdom of God, to do His divine will. Regardless of how or when we pass on, this is our mission. So we must be prepared, because heaven will be much too good to miss. What do you guys think about all of this talk about the end of the <laughs> <laughs> Armageddon, comets, nuclear wars, tidal waves, earthquakes. <laughs> what did you say? Worthquakes or something? Worthquakes. Worth worthquakes. What is that? Is that something from? It makes like it makes like oh, war yes. and earthquakes. Yeah, I know. Like, worth worth okay. <laughs> Armageddon, nuclear wars, comets, tidal waves, earthquakes. <laughs> sorry. Here we go with three, two. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm really sorry. Okay. 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 Stop. 
Talk to me.